now's probably a really good time to get familiar with the meetings tool. Hey, what's up everybody? How you doing? It's Max again here with another video. Um, I figured I'd make an in-depth video on how to go and set up your meetings link inside a HubSpot. I'm going to share a couple of tips and tricks that I use. I'm going to explain what some of the different features are and we're going to dive into it. This is one of the best things that you can do to manage your time effectively and stop having to go back and forth via email for days trying to figure out when the best time is to meet for an hour. Um, so hopefully you'll find this video helpful. We're going to get into it right now. All right, cool, cool, cool. So um, let's go ahead and start setting up the meetings link. Um, now, I'm probably gonna move my little face around a little bit on the screen just so I can get out of the way of stuff. Um, but uh, first thing you need to do before you like build your meeting link, um, when you go and do it for the first time, it's going to walk you through uh, connecting and integrating your calendar. So if you have Google Calendar or like you're using Gmail um, or if you have Outlook 365, um, you should be able to connect those calendars pretty easily. Uh, it's really you just click a couple of buttons, you authorize an account and, and you do it. It's pretty simple. I already hooked my account up, so I'm just going to go off the assumption that you've hooked up your calendar already to this point. It's super easy to do. If not, there's a knowledge base article in the description that I'll put in there. It'll show you how to do that. Now, let's go ahead and start uh, setting up our meeting link. So to get to the meetings tool, you have to go up into sales and then go to meetings. All right, I've already got a meeting link built here, but we are gonna build one from scratch and I'm gonna show you how this works. So let's go ahead and hit create meeting link. Now, quick note here, you can do personal meeting links or you could do team meeting links. I'm gonna be building a personal one today, but I wanna at least tell you what these team meeting links do. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on team. You have two options here when you're making team meeting links. Either one, you can do a group availability or you can do a round robin availability. What group availability means is basically you're connecting a bunch of other people's calendars to this one meeting link and you're only going to be able to book times where every single person is available and all of those people will be on the calendar invite. So a good example is, um, let's say, for instance, you're a sales rep and you want one of your customers to be able to book time with you and your sales engineer and like another account manager at the same exact time. You could build a team meeting link with those three people's calendars on it. When someone books with you, it's a t at a time where you're all available and that calendar invite gets sent to all of you. OK, round ramen availability is a little bit different. What happens here is let's say you have like a team of sales reps, right? They all have different availability on their calendar. Uh, and if someone's booking time, you may want to like take this uh, meeting link and put it on your website so that people can just book any available time that any of your sales reps has. And it will book the time with the sales rep who's available at that time, essentially. So it still only books a one-on-one -on -one meeting, but it uses team availability, essentially. Okay. Feel free to explore these on your own. They're pretty easy to set up. I'm going to hit cancel here though. We're going to come back and we're going to create a personal one. So let's go build a personal meeting link here. So I'm going to go create meeting link. I'm going to hit personal. Sweet. Now I've got another meeting link open up in the tab up here. So I'm going to kind of show you um, what affects what as we go through it. But you'll notice when you're building out your meetings link, you have these four tabs. You have details, configuration, availability, and form questions. So this is the details page here. Okay. Um, there you do a couple of different things. One, you can set a photo that you use. So if you want to put uh, you know, a beautiful picture of your face here, you can totally do that. Um, but the first thing it prompts you to kind of like fix is this meeting headline here. Now it's going to default to just say meet with and then whatever your username is in HubSpot. But let me show you where this actually shows up. So I'm going to go and look at a calendar link right here. This is where this text shows up right up here at the top. So what you may want to think about is like, what is this meeting link for? Is someone booking a demo? Is someone booking a consultation? Is this internal for your colleagues to use so you wouldn't write any of that stuff there and maybe meet with whatever your name is is totally fine. Just think about what this meeting link is going to be used for. OK, um, I'm going to go ahead and just like pretend this is a free consultation. Right. So I'm going to say book a consultation here. And what's going to happen is when I make this meeting link, that's what's going to show up at the top of the screen over here. OK, now the next thing you have is the meeting name. All right. This shows up in a couple of places. One, back when we were on that previous page and it shows all the different names of your meetings, 
that's where the meeting name is actually going to show up. The other place this is going to show up is whenever you insert a meetings link somewhere, it'll basically dump this text in hyperlinked to your actual URL for your meeting link. Okay, um, so keep this just pretty simple. I'm just going to say book consultation here. I hope I spelled that right. Okay, cool. Now here where it says meeting link, okay, I'm going to actually change this and just make it easy and just call it consultation. This is the actual URL that the meeting link sits on. Um, note that right now it says app.hubspot.com. You can opt to switching this to using your actual domain if you don't want to use the HubSpot domain. So you're not locked into that. You can change it if you want to. It does require a paid version of the sales tools, okay? You can't do that with the free version. Now, um, meeting type here. If you set up different meeting and call types in the settings, you'll see them inside of here. This is just for reporting purposes, okay? So if you do any sort of reporting on meeting or phone call types, you can select it here. I don't really think this is going to be something that the end user actually sees in the calendar event. This is like purely for reporting purposes only, okay? Now down here you have the duration. This might be one of the most important parts of this step, okay? This is how much time you are offering to someone, okay? So if you want someone to book an hour with you, you can just give them the option to book one hour. If you wanna give them the option of booking one hour and a half hour, for instance, you can add that as a second duration time, okay? Now this is totally up to you. Again, it depends on like the type of call that you're booking here. If you were building a calendar link for your internal like colleagues to use, maybe you give them the option for 15, 30, 45, an hour, you know, just because you want to give them a little bit more leeway on your calendar. But if this was a customer, maybe you want to limit those calls to 30 minutes, or maybe you want to make sure you have a whole hour with them. So you could be a little bit more direct on what durations that you offer here. Just think about how much time you want this person to book with you if they're using this link and the specific reason they're using this link, okay? So this all looks good. I'm gonna just leave it at an hour for now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next, which you can't see, it's below me right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. We'll move myself over, perfect, okay. Now, in the little configuration area. Now, what is happening here is this is basically building the calendar invite itself, okay? And to really kind of explain this, let's actually go into Google Calendar and let's go and make a new event. I'm going to hit more options and I'm going to kind of explain what's going to show up where. OK, so here location, where will this meeting take place? If we go back and look at a Google Calendar event, that's this little location field right here. OK, um, if we come back into the meetings tool, I'm just going to move some stuff around here. The invite subject. All right. That is going to be the title of the actual calendar event up here at the top, all right? Invite description, this is going to go inside of this description right here. Um, and then you got a couple of options down here, right? So booking landing page or booking page language, basically when someone's looking at your booking page, which is right here, you're choosing whatever language that they're in. By default, it's set to whatever their browser is in. So if their browser is set for Spanish, they'll see it in Spanish, but you can force a language if you wanna do that probably just leave it on, you know, defaulting to the visitor's browser. That way it's kind of the, the safest way of doing it. All right. Now down here at the bottom, you have the option for setting up different email notifications, right? So the very first one that you see basically says the second someone books with you, it's going to send them an email right away. Okay. Now you can turn that on or you can turn that off. Maybe if you turn it off, it might be because you want to set something custom up through a workflow, which you can do if you want to, but this is basically just the quick version. And then you can also send pre-meeting reminders down here. So if you want to send them a reminder here, like one hour before the meeting, just to like nudge them a little bit and say, hey, don't forget about the meeting that we have. Make sure you show up. You can do that. Again, you can always do this with workflows and things like that too, but this is just a nice, easy, quick way to set it up. All right, so that's configuration. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and like set something up here. Let's say for instance, um, I'm gonna be meeting over Zoom, right? And there isn't really a physical location. I'm just gonna type in Zoom here for the location. And then for the invite subject, what's really cool here is you can pull in uh, personalization tokens, right? So if I wanted to say like first name and max meet for one hour or something like that, I could have that be in the subject. This is also a free consultation though. So we can probably say free consultation and then we'll do a contact token, first name, 
ampersand max, right? So cool, free consultation, whatever your name is and max. And then we can put the invite description in here. Now, uh, something that I've seen a lot of people do in the past here is actually if you're using like personal Zoom rooms or, you know, uh, go to meeting rooms or anything like that, maybe you just dump that link in here. But there are integrations with things like Zoom as well, which automatically take care of this stuff, right? In the invite description, what I may recommend doing is adding any sort of message that you'd want to see someone to prep them for whatever call or meeting that you're having, right? So maybe a couple of questions to ask themselves or things they should bring to be prepared to have a good conversation, whatever it may be. But you can put whatever you want in the invite description. Again, that's going to show up in this little description area when you're looking at it as a calendar event. OK, so let's go ahead and hit next. All right. So this is one of the most important pages in this entire process, and it's where you set your availability. OK, now, by default, it's going to say Monday through Friday, nine to five. OK, but notice you can add hours here as well. Right now, it's really cool is you don't have to select every single individual day. You can if you want to do that. But notice they also have preset times for Monday through Friday and Saturday through Sunday, right? So if we wanted to keep this super easy and a little less confusing, we can just get rid of everything, have just Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., all right? Now, here's the deal. What this is going to do is this is basically going to say, hey, HubSpot meetings tool, you have permission to look within these specific time frames and if I am available, you can make that available for someone to book, okay? So this is just the window of time it has to look at your calendar to see if you're available. It won't even consider allowing someone to book anything before 9 or after 5 p.m. in this case, okay? Now, here's the thing. When you're blocking stuff off in your calendar, I'm going to go into my calendar here again. You'll notice here I have lunch from 12 to 1 p.m. every single day, okay? This, if you go and look at these calendar events, there is this little like suitcase looking thing here or just something that dictates your availability and it's either gonna say busy or free, okay? Calendar events by default say busy because they kind of assume that you're doing something at that time. But sometimes what I see folks do is they do either all day events or maybe they do like a big block on their calendar to just like remind them of something or let them know that something is taking place at that time. And what kind of stinks about this is that this blocks out your availability for HubSpot's calendar to take a look at it because it kind of assumes you're not available, right? And that's fine if you're looking to block out certain times in your calendar. I mean, it's it's honestly easier just to give HubSpot like a big window to look at and then use tactical blocks on your calendar to like not make certain times available but like if you do have like a big chunk like this on your calendar but you still want people to be able to book over it what you can do is you can go into that calendar event and you can change it from busy to free now that may be a little bit hard to see on the screen here i understand that maybe i'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see it so i can change it from free to busy or busy to free if it's set to free i'll still see it on my calendar right here but HubSpot will know that it's allowed to book over that. Okay, so just a little tidbit of information there. Um, cool. So let's go down a little bit. Okay, sweet. So once you've chosen the available time, so what time frame can HubSpot actually look at? Um, you have a couple options here, like to, to really make sure you have a lot of control over like when and how someone can book with you, right? So here, this basically dictates how far in advance someone can book with you. OK, um, you know, maybe the work you do is a little bit time sensitive and you don't want people booking you like a month in advance. Maybe you want to force them to book you within the next two weeks. You can do that um, by choosing this like over a period of rolling weeks section right here. So you can do this week and next week, which is two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, all the way out to 11 weeks if you want to. You can also do custom date ranges. Now, this is very, very valuable if you're building a meeting link just to have set up for like a trade show, for example, right? If you have the paid version of the HubSpot sales tools or the service tools, you can do multiple meeting links. And sometimes what people will do is they'll have a bunch of different meeting links that serve a bunch of different purposes. Sometimes meeting links they only use like once, right? 
trade shows would be a good example. So if you were going to a trade show and you were only going to be there from the 23rd to the 27th, that's the only time this meeting link is ever going to show as available. OK, um, but in our case, we're going to use this as if it's going to be like a regular one that we have. So I'm going to set it over a period of rolling weeks. Moving down to the next section here, we have minimum notice time. Now, this is super helpful for me because I don't like people booking me like out of the blue and me not being prepared for it. So for me, I always force people to book at least an hour ahead of time. So I have time to prep for a call. All right. Um, you can do this however you want. I know some people who do a minimum time notice of a day out. It really totally depends on kind of how you like to roll. I'm going to set it as an hour for now. The other thing that you could do is set a buffer time. Now, what a buffer time is going to do is it's going to make sure when it's booking time on your calendar that it doesn't stack it right up next to other events you have. It's going to give you time to relax, walk around, not just immediately jump to the next call. So you have the option of adding any amount of buffer time you want. If you're a total psychopath like me, you can do no buffer time. And this is what I used to do just because I like to go from call to call to call to call. That is not for everybody. However, please pace yourself. Find time in the day to rest. Don't burn yourself out, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say let's give, give me a 15-minute buffer time here. I'm not going to go too crazy. And then of course you can change the start time increment down here if you want to, which basically just dictates like the frequency in which it shows the different meetings that you have on that calendar. All right. So what we are going to do, Oh, one note before we move on. So it's going to have your time zone here, right? But essentially what's going to happen is when someone looks at your calendar, they're seeing your availability in their time zone. So you don't have to worry about the time zone too much. It's really easy like that. Okay. Cool. Finally, last piece, form questions. Okay. So with the form questions here, what happens is as soon as someone selects a time, so I'm going to choose a time right here, they get presented with a form. This is information that they have to fill out in order to book the meeting with you. Okay. Now this is going to serve one of two purposes. One, it's going to trigger a form submission in the, in the, in the HubSpot CRM which is great if you're doing like workflows, segmentations, anything like that. But also it's going to give you a chance to gather some information to make sure you are prepared for this phone call. OK, so, for example, some information that I would like to ask if it was a free consultation, um, maybe I'll do a custom question here. What is your biggest challenge? Right. We can save that and we can require it. So they have to give us that information. Now, the cool thing about this is any of these questions that you ask will get loaded into the calendar description as well as the answers. So when you're prepping for a call, you don't have to dive into the CRM first. You can just go look at that calendar event and see all the questions that that person asked. And you have that all right in front of you so you can dive right into the call as you load up the CRM, find their contact record and start taking some more detailed notes, right? Uh, but all this information will be available in the CRM as well. Note that you can either add a custom question, which just gathers some text, or you can ask them to answer a question based on a contact property. Okay. So if I wanted them to give me like my their date of birth for some reason, I can go ahead and do that. All right. And that will update the date of birth contact property inside of HubSpot. Okay. I'm going to take that off because that's super creepy. We don't need it. All right. Now, um, once someone actually fills the form out, you have the option to either display a default confirmation page, which I'll show you what that looks like right now. I'll just fill this out. Cool. This is the default confirmation page. It just says booking confirmed. It gives the time. It's all well and good. It's actually, you know, great. It's pretty easy to use. The other thing that you can do is you can redirect to another page. Now, if you've ever built a conversion path in HubSpot, which is a call to action to a landing page, to a thank you page, this would be like a custom thank you page. So instead of going to that default confirmation page, there is if you want to build a custom page that has some custom text on it, maybe has a little bit more information on like what to do between now and when your call happens, you can totally do that as well. I'm going to keep the default for now. The other thing that you can do is you can pre-populate fields with known values. So just like a regular HubSpot form, when someone comes back to a form and we recognize that user, we can automatically fill in any information that we have based on their properties and what questions are getting asked on the form. You can also do that with the meetings link. The other thing that you can do too is if you already have all of that information that you're asking for for a particular person booking time with you, you can choose to skip the form altogether. 
start. And they'll basically choose a time. It'll automatically submit for them. And then they're on your calendar. They don't have to fill out another form. This can definitely come in handy if you have customers that you're constantly booking time with. Maybe you're some sort of you know, account manager or someone who uh, is in customer service or customer success or something like that. It can kind of get annoying for people to fill out forms over and over and over again. But like, if you do have to ask, you know, someone like, what is the nature of the call? Maybe you do want to have them fill it out. It's kind of totally up to you, but you have the option to skip it all together if you want, as long as you have the information. All right. Also down here, if your company needs to be GDPR compliant, you can flip that on as well. It'll add some consent check boxes on there um, and you'll be well protected from that cool so i'm gonna go ahead and hit save changes and that's it now here's the thing you have two options when you make a meeting link okay one you can either take this link and copy it and paste it into like your email signature or something along those lines the other thing that you can do too is you can embed it on your website something i want everyone to be very conscious of however is if you deal with a high volume of leads you may not just want to make meeting links like publicly available to just anyone to book, right? Your sales rep's time is valuable. So sometimes you may want to like hide this behind like a traditional uh, form where someone actually like requests a consultation. Then you do a little bit of lead qualification. And if they are a good qualified lead that you want a sales rep to reach out to, then maybe a workflow sends an email with a link to the calendar um, and do more of a request process versus just anybody and everybody gets a meeting because you know, if you deal with a high volume, that might not be the best use of your time. Uh, either way, everyone's going to be a little bit different. Some people want to book as many meetings as they possibly can. Some people want to like do a little bit more due diligence before they allow someone to just grab time on their calendar willy nilly. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and close this. But anyway, that's how you create a meetings link. There is a number of way to get meetings links like into emails and, and different things like that. I'm going to be making a couple of videos like later on about sequences and lead handoff workflows that might be helpful to watch. Um, that will definitely include thinking about how to use your meetings link. Um, anyway, I hope that was helpful for everybody. I just wanted to get that video out there because I know now more than ever, we're going to be meeting virtually. Um, so it's really important for everyone to get a really good, deep understanding of how this meetings uh, link tool works. Um, but hey, if that was helpful, drop a comment. Um, let me know if you have any questions about the meeting link or you know if you're trying to set it up in a weird situation and I'll do my best to help you. Have a good one.